My name is John Alanam. I'm a Kenyan investigative reporter, and I'm on a journey. The volumes of the Wasanjuro River over the years has been actually going down. They come down the north, they come from all directions yes. to exploit those resources. Around here. This is recurrent now. They want this war not to end, this conflict to go on. These tens and hundreds of cattle being driven across the plains have been on a very long and desperate journey, and they are being driven up towards the Abadea Ranges and Mount Kenya. going into reserved areas much more earlier than the normal times. We are seeing that there will be a likelihood of uh, resource-based conflict. The police are trying to restore law and order. People have property, people have boundaries. And that needs to be respected, whether it's a Kikuyu, a Tugan, a Turkana, a Mzungu, a Samburu, a Pokot. You have your land and, and you have a right to protection of your land. By the end of 2017, Laikipia County, a region in Kenya well known for its great biodiversity, had been gazetted as a dangerous zone by the country's Ministry of Interior. 30 people, including six police officers, from Kenya's best-trained paramilitary unit had been killed there in violence. The world's attention had been turned there after the deaths of a prominent British national and attacks on foreign-owned ranches. But local eyes had been turned to Laikipia long before. Mahali hawa ngombe wametoka. Ngombe hawa wametoka zehemu mingi nchini Kenya hii. Kuna ngombe kutoka West Pokot, kuna ngombe kutoka Silale, kuna ngombe kutoka Amaya, kuna ngombe kutoka Samburu East, Wamba, kuna ngombe hata zimetoka shini ya Mara la Luhuko, kuna ngombe zimetoka Sukuroi upande ya Laikipia na Nyuki, na sote zimesanyika hapa. Na hawa kusanyika hapa kwa sababu wamependa kukusanyikia hapa. Wamesanyika hapa kwa sababu ya kiangazi. So this is where they are coming in from? They are coming from there. Yeah. The others are invading from this. This is Mugi, they are invading from this side. From Samburu. The others from Pokots, from this side. Yeah. And then the other Samburus are invading from Isiolo. From Isiolo. Coming north. towards... Uh, the north. Yeah. But why was this such a violent time? And why was most of the violence concentrated in just one county? Josh Perret manages the 30,000-acre Mugi Ranch, a sprawling savanna teeming with wildlife. But in January, carcasses began dotting the plains here. 30 kilometers of the ranch's fence line had been destroyed, allowing thousands of cattle coming in from the east to cross into the ranch. There was a lot of grass. There was, I mean, this whole area, there was, I mean, grass about half a meter tall, all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. And these cattle that we're seeing here, they're, they're not from your farm, is it? Your, no. From your ranch? These are cattle from, uh, generally Pakot, yeah. um, various parts of Pakot, all 
all the way down into the Rift Valley, Carpedo, Ginyang, yeah. all those, you hear Los Yolo, which is, I guess, more Samburu. Yeah. Mugi Ranch is in the northwest corner of Laikipia County, sitting on the border with Baringo County, home to the Pokot community. Your fence lines, of course, are broken. Um, yeah. <laughs> it seem like... Uh, this is, and I don't know. We saw the pump and, and the buffalo. Yeah. Is, yeah. this, is this something that happens every time uh, grass is needed from your ranch? No, we, our immediate neighbours we've been working very, with, very, very well with yeah. over the past years. Um, a lot of what's going on here are people from further afield. They're not our immediate neighbours. Yeah. So a lot of this destruction, uh, it's, it's something that is to be questioned why. There's got to be some other motive behind it. Yeah. The pastoralists didn't just break through to have their cattle graze. Millions of shillings worth of damage, bullet-riddled houses and vehicles were left in their wake. So were the carcasses of elephants and buffaloes. We have really lost a lot of animals uh, because uh, the bigger number is what we don't see because we have hyenas and the vultures around. So the bigger number is what we don't see. But uh, we, have, we have managed to see nine elephants. Uh, we have like um, a over 15 buffaloes killed right away. But still a lot of them are dying because of severe injuries that they, uh, they have. And also we have like four giraffes. Uh, the most painful one was a giraffe that was uh, killed, a pregnant giraffe. There has to be someone behind it. You don't get incredibly well-armed people with a bottomless supply of bullets. The pastoralists moved south of Mugi Ranch to Kifuku Ranch. Marie Dodds, the owner of Kifuku Ranch, had to graze her cattle inside her home compound. Like Mugi Ranch, the intensity with which pastoralists hit Kifuku was unprecedented. The crazy thing is, is here we are living on a farm and this is how you feed your cows. They are in this enclosure every single day for 24 hours a day. Um, they don't leave um, and the hay you know, you buy in the hay to feed them. Dio mwezangu nikaje tukatoka. Mimi nikafunga nikafunga nyumba. Nikaambia fuata mimi. Tukaenda naye hapo hivi, nikarukia pale hivi. Kwenda kufika pale nikaambia tupike kama nini hii. Akasema, "Na nyinyi kabila gani?" Mwezangu akaambia, "Sisi ni pokote." Wakaangaliana namna hivyo, wakaangaliana hakuongea. Akadiba basi, rukeni. Tukaruka, tukaenda tuka, tuka Baada ya kufika kama saa nane, Dio moto ikalupuka hapa. Kwangu ni nyumba iliko hii nyumba ya katikati hii. Hizi ni kijiko. Nyumba ikalupuka ndio nirudi nikaambiwa nyumba yenu hakuna kitu. This undated amateur video shows what seems to be a graduation ceremony of Pokot warriors. Armed to the teeth and very well trained and coordinated, Pokot warriors were brazen in how directly they faced off against the police or anyone who crossed their path. South of Mugi Ranch, yet more murders would be attributed to them. On March the 3rd, Tristan Vospoy, the majority shareholder of Sosian Ranch, got word that three of the cottages on his ranch had been burnt. He would visit the ranch two days later and go out on horseback to assess the damage. He met those responsible for it and was shot to death. It took the police a full day to recover his body because of how insecure the area was. Up next, we go to the ranch on which he died, finding it still occupied by Pokot herders, and speak to the man in the eye of the storm of violence in Laikipia. My people have been living in this land for more than 30 years. 